All right, guys, M-Tech Guy here. It's a bit damp out here this morning. Had a lot of rain last night for the first time in a long time. Feels like I'm back in the UK this morning. Anyhow, today we're going to be taking a look at the E60 M5 and we're going to be talking about Vanos solenoids. Now, these parts can present issues. It can cause rough running with these cars. It's not uncommon. And if you do experience issues with your Vanos solenoids, diagnosing the whole Vanos system can be quite a finicky system to diagnose. But if you take the right approach, the right steps along the way, it shouldn't be that hard and it shouldn't be too expensive unless it's your Vanos pump that's failed. And if that's the case, then you'll be needing a good sit down after swiping your card for a new one of them because they're bloody expensive. But otherwise, it shouldn't be too bad. But anyhow, let's take a look around the front of the car. We'll get the bonnet open. We'll take a look at that beautiful S85 V10 engine. And let's talk about Vanos solenoids. All right, so the S85 engine has four Vanos solenoids altogether. There's two in each Vanos unit, which sit at the front of each cylinder head here. If we take a closer look, you can probably just make out the Vanos solenoid just down there. That black bodied one down there, look. All right, so what are the Vanos solenoids and what do they do? What's their job? So, of course, the Vanos system is BMW's version of variable valve timing and the Vanos solenoids control the oil pressure to the Vanos units and they adjust the intake and exhaust camshafts. So when the solenoids start failing, what does it look like? So normally you'll see a loss of power and torque, especially down the lower end below 3000 RPMs. You normally get a rough idle. You can experience cold start and stalling issues, engine hesitation and bogging, especially down the lower rev range. Okay, so if you are experiencing then type of issues, what do you do to identify if you have issues with your Vanos system? So you'll normally get Vanos related codes in most cases, and that'll be along with a check engine light and M codes, for example, will normally look like a 271 A, B, C and D. And this is the DME triggering the Vanos codes when the cam position isn't reached or it exceeds its target within 1,500 milliseconds. But keep in mind that the DME can't read the actual Vanos pressure. So the first step is to run a Vanos solenoid performance test. And this can be carried out using software such as DIS, IMPA, ISTA and the likes. Now, sometimes the readings can show just slightly out of spec. This is very common. If it is the case, it's worth taking the car out for a decent run, get it nicely warmed up. And then when you're back home, run the tests again. Now, the readings can be very finicky. So if it's only a minute amount out of the target tolerance, don't worry about it too much. Unless you're experiencing idle issues or engine performance issues, especially at the lower end of the red range, then if you're running a test, and like I say, if it's just marginally out of its tolerance, it's pretty normal. So don't worry about it too much. All right, so what parts make up the Vanos system and what does it look like when they start to fail? So. Of course, you've got the wiring and the wiring connections to the solenoids themselves. Now, operating current can become compromised through wiring degrading, especially if it's had contamination from oil leaks. The connections may require cleaning also. And if there has been oil leaks present, once the oil gets into your wiring harness, it can start to wick up the inside of the insulation. Don't ask me how it happens or the science behind it. I don't know, but I've seen it many times. Now. Each Vanos solenoid is fitted with several O-rings and these O-rings can degrade over time due to age and constant heat exposure and this can cause the oil pressure to bypass the O-ring seals and affect the performance of the solenoid control. Now, if this is the case and you do need to go through and replace your solenoid O-rings, go with Viton material. The original was Buna, but Viton will last a lot longer and it's going to be a lot more hardy against the oil and whatnot, so that'll be the one to go for. Okay, now the Vanos solenoids themselves can become dirty over a long period of time due to bad oil, oil sludging, and then contaminants getting stuck up inside of them, such as rod bearing wear material. Even after putting a new set of rod bearings in, that old material can still be rammed up inside your Vanos solenoids. And also you can get fragments from the Vanos pump itself if it started to wear out or die. That can also get stuck up in the solenoids. Now, if this is the case, you can remove the solenoids from the engine and give them a good clean by hand with compressed air or brake cleaner or you can stick them in an ultrasonic cleaner give them a good clean out and of course you're going to want to replace the o-rings before refitting them it's not often that cleaning will solve the vanos performance issues if they are dirty and to be honest if you are going to all the trouble of going that far you might as well just replace the solenoids themselves especially when the car's at this kind of age 
And then lastly, for the Vanos solenoids, they can begin to fail over a long period of time just due to the very nature of a solenoid valve itself. They can become lazy or just fail altogether where it literally just stops working. Now any time you have to remove the Vanos solenoids from the engine itself, just keep in mind that you're introducing air into the system. So once you've refitted it, you're going to need to run the Vanos bleed procedure with the relevant software just to get any air out of the system or it's going to cause you issues and it's going to cause a lot of noise also. And then once you've bled the system, it's worth following it up with the Vanos performance test again just to see that everything's all as it should be. Now then, if you are noticing a lot of noise from your Vanos system, it's unlikely that changing out the solenoids will help reduce the typical noise issues, especially with earlier cars like mine. Super noisy, they've got the noisy Vanos gears, so yeah, it's not going to resolve it by just sticking a new set of solenoids in there. Don't worry about it. The Vanos system also uses a pressure accumulator, and although it's got the potential to go bad, I've never heard of one failing in the past. Even if it does fail, replacement is relatively cheap, but super, super rare. Like I say, I've never heard of it before. Now, whenever you are diagnosing the Vanos system, before jumping straight into the solenoids, you want to keep in mind that the supply line can also cause issues to the performance of the solenoids. It can develop leaks over time and reduce the pressure of the oil supplied to the Vanos units. Also, of course, the Vanos pump can cause the same issue too if it's developed a fault. So this is something to keep in mind if you do run a Vanos performance test and then readings are way off, it's not always necessarily the solenoids themselves. Now whenever you're diagnosing the supply lines or the Vanos pump itself, you want to be checking out that Vanos oil pressure. Now like I said earlier in the video, the computer can't see the pressure itself, the oil pressure. It's just looking at things relatively on how the Vanos solenoids themselves are performing, whether them targets are being reached or not. Now the correct way to check the pressure is to install a pressure gauge on top of the system here but you want to keep in mind that this Vanos system runs at extremely high oil pressure. We're talking around 115 bar so it's way up there so whatever gauge you're using make sure it's rated for the pressure of the system. You don't want to be sticking any old pressure gauge on there because if that thing blows off and I've heard of it happening in the past you can't be mucking around with it. Use the proper equipment and don't mess around. 115 bar, extremely high pressure. All right, so you get to this stage where you've identified that your Vanos solenoids have had it, they're faulty, you need to change them out. So what does the replacement look like? Now it's a reasonable job to get in there and remove them. You've got to take the fan unit out, the radiator's got to come out and you need to use a special T20 Torx tool to remove them. Not any T20 Torx bit on the end of a driver. You need a long skinny fitting, it's a special fitting to be able to get in there because there's not much room and it's pretty tight around the solenoids themselves. And during the replacement process, you want to make sure that you don't mix around the electrical connectors to the solenoids either. Now the actual Vanos units themselves that are fitted to the front of the cylinder heads there, the units that the solenoids fit to, they're pretty hardy on these cars. They don't often present issues, unlike say the S54 engines. Now the early versions of these cars, the early versions of the S85 V10 engine had a different style of solenoid. They did supersede it later on to a newer type and you can usually identify that. The old ones have a black body, the new ones have a silver body. So of course if you've got the older type on there and they are presenting issues, get them changed out for the newer style. They're supposed to be a little bit better. Now Vanos solenoid replacement for one of these engines used to be super expensive, especially if you're going for the genuine BMW ones, which is what you should be doing if you are changing them out. Now luckily, just recently, the price has dramatically dropped for the genuine BMW solenoids. They used to be over $1,000 each, but now you're looking around $450 each. So replacement of the Vanos solenoids is a much cheaper option now, thankfully, and it's not often you can say that about many parts for these engines, that's for sure. Okay, so Vanos solenoid experiences with the S85 we're looking at today with my car here. Now, just before I bought the car, it was experiencing issues and I went through a diagnostic process, the garage that sold me the car, the one that prepared the car for me. And initially they changed out two Vanos solenoids for the newer type, didn't fix the problem. And under further investigation, it turned out to be the Vanos supply line, the one down in the sump there. So that was replaced, everything was resolved. And nine times out of ten, if you've still got your original Vanos oil supply line, it's likely that it's failing or it's about to fail. So if you are experiencing issues, it's worth starting with that first. And like I always say, 
if you buy one of these cars and you've got no record of the rod bearings being done and especially that Vanos line it's worth pulling a sump off fresh set of rod bearings put a new Vanos supply line in there and then remove the Vanos pump itself give it a good inspection and then that's pretty much it. all the big items sorted put the sump back on and forget about it all right guys so there we have it Vanos solenoids for your s85 v10 engine and like i say it can be quite a finicky system to diagnose but if you take the right approach and the right steps it shouldn't be a big deal now if you've experienced issues with your Vanos solenoids you own one of these cars and you've been through the process and got it resolved make sure you talk about it in the comments below because it really helps other owners out when they're going through the diagnostic process and it just builds a bit of information for the community it's all good stuff if you found the video interesting or useful don't forget to give it a like make sure you subscribe to my youtube channel for more m5 content i'm mtech guy thanks a lot for watching